Uh, we now have Pooja and Mike here to talk about what happens when you flip that dynamic and pass the creativity along to your audience. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm the founder of the Pixel Academy in Brooklyn. Um, what we do is help youth create video games, 3D animation, that type of stuff. Uh, before we get started, can I get a quick show of hands? Please raise your left hand if you are an educator or work with youth in any way. Keep your hands up. Please raise your right hand if you are a game designer, game developer. You can have both hands up. That's great if you do. If you do, you're in a great position to actually work with some of the stuff we're talking about. If you only have one hand up, please keep your hands up just for one second. Look around. See if anyone else has the other hand up than what you have up. That's a great person to work with after this conference. Talk to them and figure out how to do a program that we're going to talk about. Great, and my name is Pooja Dasari. I work with the California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco. Um, we are a natural history museum, a research institution, a planetarium, a living rainforest, all under one roof. It's kind of amazing. And I manage our digital learning programs. Um, I've been involved in uh, youth working with technology, building video games for over a decade now. Uh, Mike and I have worked together on a handful of projects, everything from curriculum development, empowering youth um, to build games that allows uh, them to tell stories, um, to a project that we recently worked on where we had a group of high schoolers that were creating a mobile game about earthquake safety that's actually out on the academy floor, and Mike was our, um, kind of our co-lead on that project. And uh, we are here today to talk um, really specifically about some skills that you can use to get youth engaged um, in civic engagement through game development. Because young people are typically consumers of games, um, it's sometimes really hard to see how they can actually use this technology to do something good in the world. Um, so to break it down into really simple terms, uh, we've kind of turned this into 14 steps um, and 14 tips that you can use and take back to the work that you're doing um, to help the youth that you're working with or the youth that you want to work with be civically engaged in game development. So you want to let them pick the topic. Uh, we had a group of youth that were working on this earthquake game that I, that I mentioned a second ago. Um, if we had told them that we wanted them to make a game about um, uh, tectonic plates, they probably would have had a snooze fest. But we put it in their hands. We asked them what they wanted to do. We asked them why it was important to them. And they came up with this really amazing multi-level game where they had an opportunity to explore what kinds of things you wanted to have an earthquake safety kit and where you wanted to hide and all the reasons why behind that. So they had an opportunity to engage in not only the research but the development of the game which provided so much deeper of an experience for them. And if you, if you let them, there are things that they care about, right? I mean, these are teenagers. They have opinions about everything. If you just let them go with the flow, you know, let them decide what's important to them, it's gonna be a lot more meaningful of experience. So, focus on the message. Uh, we kind of had a little disagreement about this. We were saying focus on the message, focus on the why, focus on the message. We weren't really sure like, how to put this because we kind of felt that they're the same but different. Um, I say focus on the message. I think the most important thing is the end result about what you're trying to communicate, what you want the player to hear from you in your voice. Uh, and that's just something you need to reiterate over and over again. And that's how Mike wins an argument. <laughs> um, so truth and consequences. This is really important when working with youth. A lot of times kids are hearing no all the time and they're not being given a reason why. So in a situation where you're allowing them to take the driver's seat, really allow them to make those decisions and then also share with them what the consequences of those decisions are. Be truthful about it. So if they want to make a 10 level game instead of saying no, that's not possible, um, talk to them about what the impact of that's going to be on their overall experience. If you've got them for three weeks and they want to make a 10 level game, well, they're probably not going to get um, very much on each level. Maybe a title screen, that's it. Tell that to them and share with them what the consequences of those actions are going to be. Yeah, just like Pooja said, never say no. You know, you say, yeah, you could do that, but here's what's going to happen if that's the route that you choose. So pick the right platform, and by platform, we've got two meanings here. We've got development platform and delivery platform. All right, you want to pick the best uh, development platform for the age group. Uh, you don't want 
kids who are six or seven years old trying to figure out Unity. It doesn't make sense, you're not gonna go anywhere. You wanna have something that they're gonna be able to master in a short amount of time and complete the project with. And you wanna think about the platform of delivery. Is it going to be web-based, mobile-based, uh, iPad-based? You need to think about this before you get started uh, because it's gonna affect how you get started. You don't wanna be creating an iPad game for users that don't own iPads. That doesn't make any sense. So this is something you need to think about from the start. No, it doesn't suck. Yeah, it'd probably be better. Um, so being really proactive with the youth that you're working with about how far they've come and where they need to go. Um, kids are so easy, it's so easy for them to be down on themselves or be like, this really sucks. I don't know how to make it better. Yeah, it could probably be better. What are our options and how to make it better? So really turn a positive spin, make it proactive, have them think about how they can improve the work that they're doing and be real and say, yeah, this probably could be better, but no, it doesn't suck. Let them take on real roles. Uh, have them be a game designer, a game developer, a QA tester, a producer. Um, find, find out what it's actually called, what the real roles are in game design. If you're a game designer, you know them. Uh, if you're an educator, maybe you don't. Find out exactly what it's called. Um, you know, don't just say that you're, uh, you're in charge of playing the game and finding bugs, you're the bug finder. It's quality assurance, it's QA. Give them the real terms and let them choose what they want to do. And you don't need to be an expert to know all the terms. Um, I'm by no means an expert in video game design. Um, I kind of only play one in the classroom. But what we do is we give kids roles or give them an opportunity to choose what their roles are and then also ask them to go out and see what that's called in the real world. So, you know, go to EA, call, find someone that's connected there or just find opportunities to connect them to people that are real and in the industry. Mike has come in to be a mentor for some of the youth that I've worked with before and has been the one that's been able to give them a lot of the language that they use in terms of how they approach game development. Provide them with access to real life people if you don't know the information yourself. And it's really cool, right? I mean, wouldn't you rather be called like the lead game developer on this program, um, you know, instead of just being saying, you know, we're part of this team. Like, great, it's great to be part of a team, but it's also really cool to have your own unique title. So start with the intended outcome and then work backwards. And this kind of goes back to what we were saying about platform. Um, it's really important to just always think about what that message is. Uh, you want to, not, not just when dealing with platform, but also thinking about gameplay. Um, you really want to, from the beginning, and from the backwards, I know this is kind of confusing now. So from the back, the end result, right, is getting the message across. How do you get that message across with the platform? How do you get that message across through the gameplay? And then you start designing the game around that, right? So you have to start at the end. What is the result? And then figure out how you get there. All right, so this is a really important one. One of, the, um, one of the main tenets that I always hold in my classroom is let them decide how they want to rule themselves. This is really scary to do with middle school kids, but what you see come out is kind of amazing. Um, I like to refer to myself as the chauffeur and the one that provides them with a map of where we want to go. They have different roads they can choose that we want to drive them down. And, of course, I'm never going to drive them on the wrong side of the road, but they're the ones that are really driving the decisions. So if they decide together as a group that they want to make a game about Beanie Babies, I don't know why they would, but they, um, they decide that together, that's great. Um, if they decide half the group wants to make a game about Beanie Babies, the other half the group wants to make a game about something that's more socially relevant than Beanie Babies, um, then they can choose to separate the class into two groups. But like Mike was talking about earlier, giving them real life roles, providing them with real life scenarios allows them to think about how they're gonna be able to take the experience that they're getting right now and apply that to their own personal lives currently and then also as they go into the future when they take on real world roles. Um, fail big, fail fast. Uh, I, I had a big fail big, fail fast moment this morning when I realized that this slide wasn't actually in our presentation. <laughs> Um, and it's, it's a great thing to do, celebrate mistakes. Kids are so incredibly overprotective of their reputation and they don't wanna see anything bad happen. 
Um, and they don't want to be put down, feel like they're being put down for anything. So encourage them to fail really early on and celebrate that and set the tone that that is an opportunity for learning. So it's not just like, oh, you forgot to turn on the computer. Have them do something really big, like break a game or not break a computer, but do something that allows them to see what failure looks like and then you have them use that as their measuring point for success. Be a role model for silly. Um, this is super important when you're working with kids. You know, you show up on day one, you're working out of a classroom, you're working out of a school, out of a library, out of a museum, and these kids are gonna be sitting you know, in their chairs, they're gonna be calling you sir or madam. Um, they're gonna be really you know, uptight because it's, it's, they think of it as work, as a school project. They wanna get a good grade, they wanna behave themselves. When you're making games, you've gotta be having fun. You know, if the game is gonna be fun, you have to have fun creating it. You've gotta be silly. You know, show up on the first day wearing a tutu or a wig or something, you know, like Dracula fangs. Whatever you want to do, you have to be that role model for the silliness because they're not going to be the first ones to do it. They're only going to do it after they see you do it. I used to, uh, I used to work for an organization that had a motto called Lose Your Cool, working with kids. So take what is considered cool and then lose that and encourage the kids that you're working with to do that as well because once they get to that most primitive uh, versions of themselves, that's when they're going to really start being the most true versions of themselves, and that's when you're going to get the most authentic work from them. So you want to make sure that you schedule things in pencil, because things are going to change. And more importantly, the things changing is schedule. You know, the first part, you're, when you're dealing with kids, again, it's different than working with an actual game development company or team. Uh, they're on a very fixed schedule. They might be leaving in whenever for, for summer camp. They might be going to another school or graduating or vacation. It's a very fixed timeline. Right? You can't just push deadlines back. So you really have to do think from the start, all right, this is how long we think the game's going to take. Double that, right? and then say, OK, here's our deadline. And then halfway through, that's when you start QAing and, and figuring things out. Uh, but you do that in pencil because it's going to change. Uh, for the kids, especially if you're letting them run it, they have no idea how long it takes to do things. Uh, they're going to underestimate everything. Yeah, one of the examples that I have is that the project that Mike and I most recently worked on, um, the youth that we were working with thought that they wanted to build a game with three levels, and they had three months. And uh, you know, following the tenet of truth and consequences, we talked about the, the, the truth of the matter and what those consequences were. And until they got to that kind of oh crap moment, they didn't realize that they're not going to be able to do more than a level, maybe a level and a half themselves. And so at that point, we presented them with an opportunity to bring in an outside developer, which was Mike, and they worked with him via Skype to have him build out the rest of the game for them. So thinking about how you can uh, be malleable with your schedules, how you can change things up, and really providing them with the opportunities to think really creatively about how to erase certain things that you have in your schedule and re-pencil them into something else. Uh, so relate everything to their world. Um, this is actually something that I, I heard mentioned today also. You really want everything to be relevant to them. Um, we had a great example over lunch. Do you remember what it was? I don't. I don't either. Um, <laughs> we're running out of time, so we'll, just, we'll create a new one on the spot. Um, so relate everything to their world. Oh, water. So if you're trying to teach kids about the environment, um, you don't say, OK, you can go up on your roof and put a solar panel up. You say things like, you can turn uh, the light switch off and you leave the room. You can make sure your faucet isn't leaking. These are things that they can do, actionable steps that are relevant to them in their world. Uh, it's the same thing about this process. Everything that you go through, relate it to them. They're not trying to change the adult world or like the world somewhere else. This is their world. They're in it. So make sure that they know that and they feel part of it. And again, it does come back to context, right? Once they start understanding how things relate to their world, they're going to be able to place those things in the bigger picture of the world that's outside of what is in their immediate view. So once you start being able to make things small enough for them to be able to digest, then they can start building more and more pieces on and being able to digest bigger things. Treat them like adults, because a lot of times they're smarter than we are. So this, this is our, our last point because I think it's, it's the most important and it really covers everything else that we've talked about too. Uh, you, you have to treat them like adults. You can't run this like a traditional classroom where you're, you know, they have to raise their head, go to the bathroom, things like that. I mean, yeah, you know, maintain control, but 
they're solving a real world problem, um, something that's probably serious and very important to them, and they can't be treated like kids uh, for that to go well. They have to be treated like adults, and that's the best way that you're gonna achieve all the other things uh, that we mentioned there. And uh, at the academy, with the youth programs that we run, uh, we uh, put the kids face to face with our exhibit team. We put them face to face with our electrical engineers. We put them face to face with everyone that's doing the same things that they're doing, um, granted on a bigger scale, but it allows them to see how the skills that they're building can turn into something bigger, that can turn into a lifelong passion, it can turn into a career for them, or it just gives them more context in how they can use the skills that they're gaining right now to do something that they haven't ever really thought about before. And you know, the one point that Mike and I really wanted to end on is working with kids is kind of like the biggest customer service industry out there because your, your customers are the kids that you're working with and the success of your product is really seeing how they develop into human beings that wanna go out and do well in the world. Um, and, you know, I, I guess I can't say more than that other than, um, you know, we encourage you as game designers or educators to really think about how you can serve the youth that you're working with in a way that allows them to impact the world in a greater way than they ever thought they could. And if you're, if you're wondering, like, how do I go and start a program like this, just, just go and start it. I mean, they'll come. It's field of dreams. You know, if you build it, they will come. They want this stuff. I mean, you're, you're hearing all about it. Just start it. And uh, feel free to reach out to Mike or myself. Our, all of our contact information is up there, and we're happy to talk with you about the programs that we've built and the experiences that we've had and some of the projects that we've run as well. Thank you. Thank you.